I'm Lynn Francis, and my latest novel is called The Margate Maid, published in paperback under the title A Maid's Ruin. I'm here in Margate, East Kent, to show my daughter the locations that inspired the story. When I moved from London to Kent a few years ago, I made the chance discovery, while researching names for another project, that my father's side of the family were originally from Margate, when I thought they'd always lived in Hull. I found a reference to my ancestors living in Margate in the 1800s when they had a cow barn in Church Street. One was selling milk, another was listed as living close by in Prince's Crescent. I went to Margate to see whether the addresses still existed and discovered that the cow barn had long gone, but both roads were still there. I had a look around the local churchyard, St John's, for evidence of any family graves, but found nothing. Well, it's a very old grave, but there's no writing left, and they're all the same, they've all weathered. This one's 1830, but nothing back. I began to research online. My searches led me not to family graves, but to a watercolour of St John's Church by the artist William Turner, who studied in Margate in the late 1700s. Around the same time, I went to the Turner Contemporary in Margate and saw an exhibition of Turner's work, which included a watercolour sketch of cows. His links to the area had begun much earlier than I had thought, in 1786, and the seeds were sown for my story. So I imagined in the story that, the, that Aunt Jane and Uncle William live in the tall houses, the grand ones, and that the rest of the family live in a small cottage next to those big houses there. Those ones there? Yeah. Inspired by the cow barn of my ancestors, I already had a character in mind, a dairymaid, Molly. She meets the young Turner sketching in the churchyard, and I had my opening chapter. I researched Turner's early life and discovered two other works he'd painted in Margate, presumably when he was studying there in the 1780s and 90s. One of two ladies outside a shop in Margate with the harbour behind, and one of the gatehouse, known locally as Dandelion. These all found their way into the story, along with a sneaky reference to Jane Austen. I made a lot of use of an old map that I found online, and it showed that St John's Church was on the very edge of town in those days, before Margate became the sprawling town that it is today. The local directories of the era, which list the addresses of the shops and shopkeepers in town, helped to flesh out a picture of life at that time. Walking around the town today, parts of the High Street and Hawley Square contain buildings that are on the face of it, little changed since Georgian times. The site where Turner studied is commemorated with a blue plaque, but the building has long gone. Turner plays a small part in the narrative, but he carried on being drawn back to the area arriving by boat from London to a harbour much simpler than the one we see today. He found love with his Margate landlady, Mrs Booth, commemorated here in the bronze shell lady at the end of the harbour arm. Her lodging house, positioned where the Turner Contemporary Gallery sits today, gave him glorious views across the water. You'll have to read my book to discover whether Molly was successful in her own quest for love.